India's third mission to the moon, Chandrayaan-3, will take off this afternoon at 2.35 p.m. as the country aims to achieve what its predecessor could not, land softly on the lunar surface and explore it with a rover. Well, Parmeshwar, Israel says uh, learning from the last moon mission, it has reduced the number of engines on the lander from five to four and updated the software. Everything has undergone rigorous testing. Now, Divya, a successful soft landing will make India the fourth country after the US, Russia and China to achieve the feat. Well, Chandrayaan-1, India's maiden mission to the moon, launched in October of 2008 and remained operational till August of 2009. Joining us for further clarity on the Chandrayaan-3 mission to better understand it, we've got on the broadcast this morning Divyanshu Podar, founder of Rocketeers, Ratan Srivastav, author and independent consultant on aerospace. And in a short while from now, we will be joined by our science editor, Pallav Bagla, as well. Let me take my first question to uh, Divyanshu Podar, the founder of Rocketeers. The focus has been on what all can fail and how to prevent it. What went wrong with Chandrayaan-2 and what lessons have been learnt? So, uh, the design approach that ISRO has taken for this mission, uh, as iterated by Somnath sir, who is the current chairman, uh, is that uh, that they have taken a failure approach, a failure oriented uh, approach rather than a success oriented approach. So, uh, this time the Chandrayaan mission uh, has much more redundancies. ISRO has done a lot to ensure that uh, failures do not occur, including strengthening of the legs. They have two uh, engines which are uh, being used for the soft landing. Uh, there are lots of new redundancies. There are three antennas that are uh, in both increasing the data rate between the uh, between the ground stations and the uh, the orbiter, as well as uh, helping uh, with redundancy towards uh, ensuring that data keeps flowing. There are redundancies on the sensors. Uh, uh, the algorithms and the softwares have been improved and made more robust. Uh, so. ISRO has taken a host of different uh, sort of approaches to ensure that failures do not happen. And uh, 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 this mission uh, is is uh, is utilizing almost the complete capacity of the LBM3 uh, platform. So the the, the mission weighs at around uh, 3,900 uh, kilograms, and uh, it's utilizing almost the complete capacity of the four uh, four ton capacity of the LBM3. Right. Let's bring in Ratan Srivastav as well. Now, the success of Chandrayaan-3 will not just reaffirm ISRO's position as one of the front-ranking spacefaring nations, but don't you agree it will also then allow us to get actively involved in more collaborative missions with other space agencies? Yes, thank you for this question, and I think it's very pertinent to note uh, the capacity enhancement that has been brought in by Devyanshu. Uh, India has always been cooperating with the uh, spacefaring nations. We have collaborated with NASA, we have collaborated with JAXA, and we have collaborated with the European Space Agency as well, as we all know. So uh, I think the learnings that we, are going, that we got from the first Chandrayaan mission, that is when we discovered water on the moon, and that was also a ISRO NASA mission. And going on to the series of the learnings that we're going to have, uh, from Chandrayaan 2. In Chandrayaan 2, the orbiter was a success, as we know. Only the Pragyan and the Vikram couldn't work the way it was supposed to work. And uh, in, in Chandrayaan 3, the knowledge and the learnings that we will get from the experiments that you're going to, get, but to conduct on the one lunar day, 14 days on the moon, are probably going to be shared at some point of time with our collaboration collaborators, as India has also signed the Artemis Accord. As a part of, uh, as, as a participant in the Artemis support, uh, we get knowledge from our partners and we also will share our knowledge at some point in time with partners. Right. Uh, let's uh, talk about the mission. Uh, take us through the outlook, uh, Mr. Padar, as far as Chandrayaan is concerned. Do, what do we hope to do with Chandrayaan? And also talk us uh, through the landing. Now, the sun needs to rise to a certain height in order to generate sufficient power for its landing. When can we expect the landing process to start? So uh, uh, the the landing site that has been selected is a is a polar region, and uh, the, the the areas very near to the pole have not been explored in situ up till now by any other uh, spacecraft. So this is the first time that ISRO is sort of uh, going there in situ. Uh, the chance uh, the, the, 
the meep uh, uh, that we had on chandrayaan 1 where you know we had a, a moon impact probe uh, uh, which was uh, which was just thrown onto the moon uh, at chandrayaan 1 and also was uh, one of the uh, one of the instruments responsible for discovering water that was also there in situ but uh, uh, but this is for the first time that we will actually have a robotic uh, a system that we can monitor that we can uh, that that has much more data collection capabilities uh, that is going to be there in such a reason as for the sun rising uh, isro uh, has already uh, firstly they isro has doubled the capacity of the battery so earlier the the battery was 5000 uh, ampere hours uh, 5 ampere hours and currently the battery capacity is at 10 ampere hours and uh, so that obviously helps with a much much longer battery life span uh, but uh, as the the rover separates from the lander uh, the, the rover needs to be in the view of the lander so that's why the terrain matters a lot uh, so even when the sun is there and the the battery power uh, is available uh, but if 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 the terrain or the of the landing site is such that uh, the rover cannot move away while being in the view of the the lander uh, then then uh, that that might be a problem and uh, so that's why the landing site that has been selected is in such a way that uh, it's it's a vast flat expanse so that um, the rover can move away and, and and explore and still remain within the camera view of the lander in fact mr shrivastava a successful soft landing this afternoon will make india the fourth country just after the united states russia and china to achieve this feat so we're part of the big league post 2:35 pm today if all goes well Permission. I just wanted to add a little bit to what uh, maybe I should just of say. Of course. Uh, ISRO has selected two spots: the primary and a secondary spot for landing, which is different from the first spot. Firstly, and the area selected for landing is vaster compared to the Chandrayaan two. And uh, the second part of the uh, story is this: that let's say for some reason we are not able to land uh, on the moon on the designated date, which is probably. the 22nd or the 23rd of august and not now today is just the launch we are going to do the injection and thereafter we have to take it to the lunar orbit so the landing would probably happen on 23rd if all goes well right just for some just so for, for some reason if the landing is not possible let's say uh, some technical reason or something the current propulsion module is car- and and the lander and the rover are carrying enough propellant propellants in it to sustain it through one lunar day that is another 28 days and they can land on the moon on the next lunar day whenever it happens so i think uh, uh, the isro has taken all the lessons that it has learned from chandrayaan 2 built into a robust system which will possibly cater for all the unforeseen circumstances that could probably occur it has also strengthened the legs as you probably are aware it has also uh, increased the margin for rate of descent the rate of descent is supposed to be 2 meters per second but it will cater to up to 3 meters per second so i think all probable uh, uh, you know all probable exigencies have been taken into account when we should be able to land on the moon in a in 20 on 23rd august right uh, we also have pala bagla joining us uh, sir the chandrayaan can only last for one moon day how many uh, earth uh, days does that translate to and does weather play a role in its launch well good morning to all interstellar travelers happy to be on air with ratan and mr podar and our weather person pala sir we're the yes. lucky ones we i i am really grateful to you it is indeed a big launch isro has prepared well the weather i am told that shri harikota is conducive for a launch to take place at 2:35 pm but the weather in on the moon is what will decide whether we have a successful landing on august 23rd or not uh, these are risky missions isro has prepared well hard lessons have been learned from chandrayaan 2 Uh, isro was flying the vikram lander with five engines during chandrayaan 2 and that caused a lot of problem for the uh, vikram lander this time the fifth engine has been removed which was introduced at the last 
almost at the last minute and that is why the Vikram lander went out as an under-tested machine. This time, Indian Space Research Organization has done many tests which are called off-nominal tests. And this time, success should come India's way in soft landing on the moon. And when it happens, India would still be the fourth country to have successfully soft landed on the moon. Only Russia, America, and China have successfully soft landed on the moon. And it is so risky. That's why it's called minutes of terror as it comes into land. After India's Chandrayaan 2 Vikram lander failed, another soft landing by Israel and then another soft landing by Japan failed. So we are in for a difficult time, but yes. I have great confidence, like Mr. S. Somanath told us in an exclusive interview, that all the known unknowns have been taken care of. And it is thumbs up today for a liftoff of Chandrayaan 3 on India's Bahubali rocket. Well, thank you so much, Palav, sir, for joining us with that update. Thank you, gentlemen, for making time for us. Scientists at ISRO through this third moon mission aim to demonstrate various capabilities as both our guests have highlighted as well, including reaching the orbit of the moon, making a soft landing on the lunar surface using a lander and a rover coming out of the lander to study the surface of the moon.